let me set the scene for you here. If you've seen this before, you kind of know the idea. If you haven't seen this before, you're gonna find out that really what this is, is I've broken it up over four days. It's four day week, so I've taken some things out and changed it. But this is the agenda over the next four days, topics that we're gonna to cover. Today, we're gonna to look at something that I think is the thesis of this whole thing. To me, this is kind of the point. It's what I call the three paths, so we'll get into that. Um, it's about goal setting, it's about outcomes versus processes, and really kind of the importance of taking control of certain aspects of your life. Tomorrow, we're gonna look at, okay, so you're making good decisions, you wanna start a diet, you wanna start exercising. Well, what are the cognitive reasons why it's hard to break bad habits? And what are the things that we have to do in order to institute good habits, right? So that's what we'll look at tomorrow. Psychology of decision-making habits, both bad and good. On Thursday, we're gonna look at this negative mindset that I think a lot of people very easily fall victim to, um, what's referred to as cognitive distortions. I'm gonna call them the mental sins, the mental sins that people commit, um, thought processes that you don't even know are toxic, that go on in your mind, that can rob you of happiness and well-being and all that kind of good stuff. Then day four on Friday, we'll look at what does a healthy romantic relationship consist of, how do we avoid toxicity, in those relationships, because that's an important part of your life, right? We wanna make sure that we get that right. So that's the goal, the, the plan over the next four days. Now we're gonna to start today is I wanna kind of start with the thesis and the theme of this whole thing. And this is what I'm gonna call the three paths. So there's some things that you're gonna, you're gonna put down on paper today, right? So if you wanna go ahead and take out a sheet of paper, you can. It's, uh, you're not gonna to have to write much. No one else is gonna see it, this is for you. It's an exercise in goal setting, but you probably want to use the whole thing. So go ahead and take out a piece of paper if you can. And the goal here with this stuff is never for me to tell you how to live your life, so to speak. But what I'm trying to do is I want to try to share with you some wisdom of experience and shift your way of thinking about certain things in your life. Because once we get into this today, you're gonna to see as this unfolds in the next few minutes, there are things that are just truths. There are things that people want in life, and there are things that people want to avoid in life. And the reality is if, if that's your goal, if you wanna have healthy relationships, if you wanna have a good job, if you wanna have good finances, if you wanna become financially independent or wealthy, if you wanna be uh, academically successful, if you want to be successful in your job, if you want to travel the world, whatever it is, fill in the blank. If that's what you want, you have to be intentional about how to get it, right? So, this is the three paths, right? So, here's where I want to start. For some of you, you're in a really good place right now. Maybe you're having a good couple weeks, you just came back from break, things are going well. You have everything you want, you're contented, you're fulfilled, life is good. But for more people, that's probably not the case. And in fact, even if that is the case now, at some point in the future, it won't be the case. So this is rhetorical, I don't want you to answer this out loud, but I want you to think about at any given time in your life where you're not as fulfilled as you could be, what is the reason for that, right? I'm willing to bet that a lot of the sources of stress for you are gonna be things like uh, I don't know, neurotic worry about things that you can't control. Maybe the future. You're a senior and you don't know what next year looks like. You're trying to juggle, do I go to this college or that college? Do I stay local? Do I go off? Do I start a job? Do I go into the military? I mean, those are important questions. Maybe you have a pretty messed up home situation. I don't know. Maybe you are fighting with your parents. Maybe you have, um, you're fighting with your significant other. Maybe you're dog just died. I, you know, I don't know. I don't know what your personal situation is, but obviously the circumstances in your life change. They don't say, stay consistent. They don't stay the same. So for whatever reason, the point here is this. I kind of thought about this the wrong way, right? When I was in high school and then when I was in my 20s, my, my thought process was, was really not that intentional. It wasn't that planned out. It was kind of this idea that like, okay, if I'm going to just like keep moving forward in life and I check these boxes and I do what I'm supposed to do, then good things are going to happen, right? Why? Just because they're supposed to. Or is this is normal like millennial entitlement. This idea that like 
you do everything the right way, you keep your head down, you study, you go to school, you get a degree, you get a job, then you can afford to buy the stuff you wanna buy, you live happily ever after, right? The reality is, is that that's not our default setting. We don't default to a successful life. We default to a complacent, comfortable life. And so we have to avoid that by being intentional about what we value. So if something's important to you, you have to be intentional about making it healthy, right? It has to be something that you put concerted effort into. It's just like plants, right? When plants, if you don't feed them, if you don't water them, if you don't fertilize them, they die. Relationships are the same way. They're no different. If you let the relationship happen, you think, okay, well, it's not toxic. There's not bad things going on. We're just in a rut. Things are normal. Look at that on Friday, right? Some of you probably have some eye-opening stuff that you're going to learn about healthy relationships. If you don't pour attention and effort into relationships, they die. Same thing in your job. What happens if you get too comfortable in your job? What happens if you, you're like stuck in this rut and you're good? You don't really change anything. You go to work every day. You do your job. You punch the clock. You punch in. You punch out. You go home. Why is that a bad thing, coach? It's not that it's a bad thing, but you get too comfortable. You don't move outside of that comfort zone. You don't innovate. You don't get promoted. You don't get a raise. You don't contribute more than you could. You're not living the most self-actualized life that you can live. That's the point. The point is that if you want success, if you want fulfillment, if you want happiness, it has to be intentional. It doesn't happen by accident. And I know some of you are thinking like, well, duh. But people don't live their lives that way. They just accidentally stumble through things and just hope they turn out for the best. Right? People just stumble through college and hope that they're going to do well in life. People just stumble through clumsy relationships and hope that they're going to turn out well. They stumble through raising kids. They don't have a plan. They're not intentional. They're too comfortable. They're too complacent. And they don't see growth. And then they blame the world for their problems. They blame other people. They blame successful people for being too privileged or whatever the case may be. But there's a couple things you're gonna hear from me today that I really want you to know as takeaways. And the first takeaway that I want you to understand is this, no matter what circumstances happen to you, you are ultimately responsible for your own success. You're responsible for your own well-being. You're responsible for your own happiness. Your significant other, your spouse, they're not responsible for your happiness. You are responsible for that. You're not responsible for theirs you are responsible for yourself. I'm not gonna promise you any outcomes. I can't promise you that things turn out the way that you want them to. Even if you know everything about trading stocks in the stock market, it doesn't mean that you're guaranteed to be a millionaire. There's things you can't control. There's things that are outside of your control. That's one of those mental sins that we'll talk about on Thursdays. This idea, it's a cognitive distortion that's called the fallacy of fairness. We expect to be treated fairly. I don't know why. There's no guarantee that you're gonna get a fair shake in life. I heard somebody say that. They were like, well, all I want is a fair chance. Well, you're not gonna get that. Sucks to suck. So where do we go from here? Well, if you remember, if you're in my class a couple weeks ago, I mentioned to you my greatest fear for you after you leave this place. It's not that you're gonna be unsuccessful. It's not that you're gonna be unhappy. It's not that you're gonna get divorced and have bad relationships or have a bad college experience. Does anybody remember what I, is my greatest fear for you in the future when you leave this place? It's that you'll become nihilistic and depressed. Be floating through life without a purpose. Not understand the value of things. So my goal is not, my goal is this, I'll say it this way. My goal is to create a paradigm shift on your approach to the things in your life that you find important, right? We wanna eliminate unnecessary anxiety. We wanna eliminate unnecessary depression. We wanna eliminate nihilistic thoughts. We wanna eliminate all these things that you don't have to go through. And if you want certain things in life, you have to think about the best way to go about getting those things. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Today is all about 
how do we create and stay on this path to purpose? Because if we're complacent, if we don't try, if we're not intentional, we're going to slip into destructive habits really quickly, right? So there's another truth. That first one wasn't really on the screen, but the next one is people can tell you whatever they want to tell you. They can tell you what they value with their mouths verbally. But the reality is if you want to see what's important to people, if you want to see what they're passionate about, all you have to do is look at how you spend your time. Because time is one of those resources that when you have the freedom to choose to spend it how you want, that's what you're motivated to do, right? So for instance, when you go home from school today and you have free time, what you then choose to spend that free time on, those are the things you're motivated to do. And what you saw during the pandemic, when we had a lockdown, is that you had time on your hands. And how you chose to spend that time says a lot about what's important to you. And some Americans, yeah, they did spend their time productively during the lockdown. Maybe they started a business or maybe they started exercising or maybe they, you know, I don't know, got their life together, wrote a book. But most Americans didn't. Most Americans got fatter. Most Americans drank way too much. Most Americans sat around, slipped into depression because every day was the same as the previous day and the next promised to be the same as that and what was the point of any of it? And we learned a very valuable lesson there, y'all. A very valuable lesson is that responsibilities are an important part of keeping us going, right? You probably learned that. Because what you probably know is what happened to the suicide rate among teenagers during the, during the shutdown. It went up 300%, 300%. So if conventional wisdom says, well, kids need more free time to be creative if they just, school is thwarting their creativity and school's a horrible place and they just don't like school, but take school away from them for less than a year and people commit suicide at a 300% higher clip. It just didn't add up. Because the reality is maybe your relationships at home, maybe they're not necessarily like toxic, but maybe your parents don't understand you or maybe they don't edify your goals or your dreams. Maybe. The people who care about you are here on this campus or maybe your your significant other is here or maybe your just social connection to other people is more important than what we originally thought the fact of the matter is is that if we want to look at what you place value on we look at how you spend your time we look at how you spend your money because that's one of the realizations of being it being a, a mature adult as you start to evaluate you can't just budget your money you have to budget your time you say, I don't have time to do X, Y, or Z. I'm so stressed out because I don't have time. But if you have a full-time job or maybe school, you go to school for eight hours and you go to sleep for eight hours, which we all know that none of you do, right? How many hours are left in the day? It's eight. Most people don't realize how much time you have available to you when you're not at school or not at your <laughs> full-time job. Now I know maybe you have a part-time job in addition to school and you have homework. And you have, that's my point. When you budget out the slices of the pie that are all the responsibilities that you have, you don't have four hours a day to spend on TikTok and Snapchat. You just don't have that. So you're saying, I don't have time. That's not true. You're choosing not to spend that time. That's just the truth of the matter. And you're like, so I'm not supposed to do anything? It's not the point. The point is, if it matters to you, if it's important to you, you have to spend time, you have to spend effort, and you have to spend energy, right? So you're showing us what's important to you by where you spend your time and where you spend your money. You say you want to be a rich person. You say you want to have good finances. You say you want to be independent. You want to own a house. Well, I bet you don't know how much money you spend at Chick-fil-A every month. How much money you spend at Starbucks every month. That's all part of that process of evaluating what you spend, what you spend in time, what you spend in money. So that's a truth that you have to understand. Your pursuits tell us a lot about your passion, more than what your words say. The other thing is this, and this is a truth you've heard before, but who you spend time with, your relationships tell us what your future looks like. That's almost unavoidable, y'all. Who you spend, the five people who are the closest to you, those people, you give it, five years and that's who you're going to become bless you those are the traits that you're going to adopt that's the future that you're looking at so since you know that 
that's some difficult decisions because maybe you've known somebody since second grade and you grew up down the street from each other and now you're juniors in high school and you realize that that's a person that you probably should cut from your life, but you're afraid to. And I get that. That's a hard adult decision. But you want to be adults. Here you are. You look at the people around you. That's your biggest influence. The five closest friends or significant other included in that. Not your parents. Their politics, their taste in music, their view of the world. What goes into your brain becomes reality. We'll talk about that on Wednesday. No, Thursday. This idea that negative self-talk, the music that you listen to, the books that you read, bless you, the podcasts that you listen to, the news that you watch creates your perception of the reality of the world that you live in. If you stay watching the news all the time, you're going to be way more stressed out than people who don't. It's just the reality of the situation. Your environment really molds you in a way that you probably don't realize. So evaluate the people who are around you, who are your closest friends. Are they heading in a direction that you want to head in? If the answer is no, then you need to cut them out of your life. And conversely, if you want to end up like certain people, you have to surround yourself with those people. Surround yourself with those influences. If you want to have good romantic relationships, then you need to be around people who have healthy relationships. Not people who cheat on their spouses all the time. If you want to be a good business person, then you need to surround yourself with other people who are good business people. That's just the reality of the situation. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to teach you an exercise in, in goal setting. With the mind here that some of the goals that we set are actually not goals. They're action statements. So some of you are probably like, okay, it's 2022. I have a New Year's resolution. And maybe it's like I want to get up and start jogging three days a week. Okay. Good for you. But let's look at the difference between goals and action statements. So the first thing I want you to write down on your paper is just a little exercise in goal setting. And I want you to make it a process. I don't want you to make it an outcome. I don't want you to make it specific. And I don't want you to make it measurable necessarily. But the first thing I want you to write down somewhere on your paper is I want you to write down one personal goal for this year. Something you can commit to doing that will make your life better. You don't have to share this with anybody. You're not going to turn it in. One personal goal, something that you can achieve this year that will make your life better. Self-improvement. Personal, it's for you. For some of you, again, maybe it's getting those people out of your life that are a bad influence on you. For some of you, it's getting your grades in order. For some of you, it's maybe it's you need to get a job. Maybe it's... Your mental health is really, really, really not good. And you want more mental peace, less anxiety. This is the year that you're going to gain some, some balance. That's a good goal. Something that you can do for yourself by the end of 2022 that you're willing to commit to. That's all right. Write it down. It's all right. Because that's what happens to resolutions. We break them. I'm going to tell you why in just a second. So write it down anyway. I want you to pick a process. Process. Now, let me tell you why. Let's say, for instance, I was in your shoes and I was like, okay, I'm getting ready to go graduate and be out in the world. Maybe I don't know. School didn't teach me. Maybe I don't understand finances like I should. So maybe your goal in 2022 is to gain a financial education. It's a good goal. The next thing you're going to write down is this. That's why I like my man's question. You need action steps. If you want to learn about finances, what does that look like? Maybe you can read three books on finances this year. That's an action step. The goal was financial education. The goal is better mental health, more self-care, more time to myself, more free time, get into that hobby, whatever it is. The action steps are how are you going to do it. So let's say this year is the year that you're going to learn how to whatever. You're going to learn how to surf. You've always wanted to. And you've never had time. So if your goal is, I'm going to start this hobby this year. It's going to be just for me. One well, action step might be, what is it that you need to get out of your life that's been in the way of that? I don't have enough time because I spend too much time on my phone. Okay. 
Maybe you need to make a commitment to, to spend less time on social. Maybe that's your goal in the first place. If your goal is I spend way too much time on Instagram, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take some time off of Instagram. Here's the thing. You don't have to delete your account. You don't have to swear it off forever. All right, we're going to talk about this tomorrow with decision making. It's called friction. You can create some steps which will make it less of a time waster. For instance, if your goal for 2022 is to have more personal time, spend less time on social media, one of the things you can do as an action step is just delete the app off your phone. Don't shut the account down, but delete the app because you won't see the alerts. In fact, if you want to log into Instagram, you're going to have to go into your, your phone's browser and type in Instagram.com and log in. You're not going to do that on a whim and on an impulse, but you will click on the app, especially if the alerts are there. So these are action steps. This is the goal. So again, this is about how to make your life better. If the goal is better mental health, or if the goal is more balance in my life, if the goal is to reconnect with your sibling, if the goal is to whatever, I don't know. If the goal is to fix your GPA so you can get into college, whatever your goal is for 2022, that's just for you, that's personal. Nobody's gonna look at it, nobody's gonna copy off of you and steal yours. <laughs> write down a goal, and then write down some action steps. I just put three, just, just, just as a model. You can write two, you can write one, you can write five, right? So again, if, if I want to improve my mental health in 2022, one of the ways I might do that is learning how to meditate. Maybe my life is so stressful because I have so much commitment, so much responsibility. Maybe I'm gonna trim some of the commitments out of my life. That's an action step. Maybe I spend too much time doing something that I could give up. That's an action step. I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it looks like for you, but this is an exercise in goal setting. I want you to write down something that you can do that you're committed to doing in 2022 that's gonna make your life better. Then we're gonna take it a step further. I want you to think about something financial. I'm gonna give you more time for this one, more span. And some of you are probably like, I don't think about five years from now, and that's your problem. That's your problem. You don't accidentally become wealthy, but you can very literally accidentally become poor. So I want you to think about a financial goal that you can achieve that's realistic now. I want you to keep in mind, if you're a senior in high school, you may not even be graduated from college by 2027. So don't say, oh, I wanna make my first million dollars. Well, that's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. Unless you make it big, you become an influencer. It's possible, I'm not saying it's out of the realm of possibility, but it's not likely. I want you to think about something financially that's a process that you would like to have by 2027. I'll give you a good one. You can cheat and steal this one. Maybe your goal by 2027 is to still be out of debt. Maybe you don't wanna take on a bunch of student loan debt and credit card debt in the next five years. And that's an important thing for you to hear because I want you to understand a lot of times people are like, okay, so if my goal is I wanna stay out of debt because I wanna build a good financial future for myself. I wanna make money, not spend money. Well, then some of the things that you can do is to make sure that you don't put yourself further into debt, right? So maybe you got into a state university, but instead of that, you're gonna to go to, I don't know, Clemson instead of going to the University of North Florida. So not spending more money on your degree than you have to. That's a good financial goal. Because here's the thing, there's nothing wrong with going out of state for school. But if your goal is to stay out of debt in the next five years, one of those ways that you can do that is by making those decisions, they're gonna keep you out of debt. That's just the reality of the situation, y'all. And you think, okay, well, it's five years from now. Everything's gonna change. How am I supposed to know? But that's my point. If you don't plan, you don't have an approach. Let's write it down. If it's something that you want, let's put it on paper. Let's make it real. Let's manifest it. Don't just make it a dream. Put it on paper. Make it a goal. Put it down. Speak it by name, right? Let's put it in existence. Because here's the thing, y'all. When I graduated from high school, I had a scholarship. I had Bright Futures. I went in state. I did the responsible thing. I lost my scholarship. Academically, my grades dropped, I didn't go to class, I lost my scholarship. If I would have had a plan, if I would have been serious about the plan, if my goal would have been stay out of debt, one of the things I could have done is not lose a free scholarship. 
So I paid, not only did I pay for tuition, I paid for the interest on a student loan for tuition, just out of sheer stupidity, <coughs> just being irresponsible. That's the point. That's what I'm talking about. Those are decisions that are in your control. Those are things that you can do or avoid doing. That's how people get into debt. Not taking on a car payment that you can't afford. Living in some really expensive apartment that you can't afford. Spending too much money on clothes. Spending all your money on fast food and coffee shops. That's how you run up credit card debt. Let's put it down on paper. Let's will it into existence. Now, if we're looking five years in the future, we have to really look at some significant time for you to create something for your life. So this is gonna be kind of crazy to think about. I want you to think about one thing, and I know you don't know what the future holds, but I want you to think about one thing, no matter how your life changes, that you hope is true for you in 20 years from today. And this is gonna be some Star Wars looking number here, like 2042. But let me put this in context for you. Let me put this in perspective. So I graduated from Gulf Breeze High School in 2002. That was 20 years ago. This summer will be my 20th high school reunion. So if I were sitting in your plastic chair, writing about how I wanted my life to look in 20 years, fast forward 20 years and here we are. It's a very weird thing to think about. 20 years is gonna happen. God willing, you get to stick around for 20 years. One thing, just one thing. It could be a job, it could be a family status, it could be something personal. Write down one thing that you hope, if you could control it, that you hope is the case in the next 20 years. Because here's the thing, man, none of this is trivial. You might say, well, I wanna have a happy family. That's not insignificant because a lot of people don't have happy families. You might want to say, I have a healthy relationship with my kids. Well, that's not insignificant because a lot of people don't have healthy relationships with their kids. You might want to say, I want to have a, a, a blissful marriage. Well, the divorce rate is more than 50%. And people don't plan for that. Some of y'all, statistically speaking, in this room will be divorced not once, but twice by the year 2042. Bet you didn't write that down, did you? People say, I would like to be divorced twice, bald and fat. Boom, by 2042. But it happens, it happens. Maybe you can't control the bald part, but you can control the divorce part and the fat part. That's the point. Put it on paper, make it real. Speak it into existence. Start thinking about the future. There's things you can't control, I know that. But I want you to start thinking long-term. If this is important to you, if this matters to you, then say it, give it a value, put it down on paper come up with a plan if you want to have a good marriage in 20 years well what are some things that you need to do think about the number one thing that stresses people out in, in, in marriages it's usually finances maybe the best thing you can do for your marriage is to get your finances on point maybe you can learn how to be a good parent maybe you can be a supportive partner I don't know I don't know I don't know what it is I've been out of high school for 20 years. I'm married, I have three kids. It's weird to think about. That's you in 20 years. It's weird to think about. That's the reality of the situation. I haven't been divorced, luckily, yet. The day is still young, <laughs> right? So there's probably something that's coming up. I don't know, no, I'm just kidding. But that's the point. This is real, it's not fake, it's not a fantasy. Like, it's gonna be 2042. You're gonna be 37 years old. It's going to happen. So plan for it. Put something down on paper. You can enjoy your life. That's not what I'm saying. But it's like, it's a wonderful life. You're getting a glimpse into the future. What are you hoping to see? Don't, what you don't hope to see is somebody who's struggling to make ends meet, fighting with their spouse all the time, working one dead-end job to another dead-end job. Those are things you can avoid. Those are things that you can avoid. Alcohol, addicted, abusive. Those are things you can avoid. You have to be intentional about this. So here's the point. Let's get into the thesis of this whole thing. What I want you to understand is that we think about being productive and we think about being destructive, but there's another one. There's, there's, there's a, a middle option. See, our default setting 
is complacency, is comfort. Our default setting is to not do. So the longer we continue down this path, as life goes on and years progress, it doesn't matter if it's, let's say this is your relationship. So maybe in your job, you're like on point, man. You're like purposeful about your job and you pour a lot of time and energy into your career and you show up at the office early and you go to work and you do everything that you can. You go above and beyond. You get your boss's attention. You're climbing the ladder. You're making money. Everything is looking up. You got this intentionality about you. Everything you do is purposeful. Everything you do is strategic and you're going places and that's great. But what if that's your job, but not your personal life? What if in your personal life, you've neglected your relationship? What if you're really complacent about your romantic relationship? What if at the expense of your career, where you're pouring all of your time and energy, you've neglected your personal relationships? Well, you can only be complacent for so long because look at this. this. I like this as a trident. This has kind of changed in the way that I used to present it. I actually think this is more accurate. It didn't really sit right with me last time. And I'm like, that's not really what I want to convey. And I think this is a better metaphor, a better visualization. Because the longer you continue down any one of these three paths, the further you separate yourself from the other ones. You have to reevaluate the paradigm of how you set your goals. Again, if your relationships matter, then you have to be purposeful about making them successful. But what does that look like? Remember, there's things that you can't control. There's, I'll tell you another story. I told you I lost this scholarship, which was just, just dumb advice. In 2004, my wife bought her first house. She was like a sophomore in college. She had a bunch of money that her parents had put away for her to go to school. And wisely, she made the right financial investment. She said, I'm gonna take this money since I got a scholarship for college. I'm gonna use the scholarship for my college tuition. I'm gonna take this money that's sitting in a mutual fund and I'm gonna buy a house. Because we were thinking, you know what? Houses appreciate in value and you can sell the house and you can make money. Well, this was 2004. So four years later in 2008, who knows what happened to the housing market in 2008? Uh, crashed. Unprecedented lows. Houses on our street were bank owned. You couldn't give them away. Housing markets just kept dropping, or the housing values kept dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping. We couldn't get offers on the house when we wanted to sell it. I had a job offer up here in 2010. We couldn't get out from under the house. Even when people made us offers, the bank wouldn't take the offers because they were lower than what the house, what the loan was actually worth. We had to navigate that. Here's the point. Sometimes you do everything right and plan and do the most responsible thing and still a bad thing happens to you. It's not necessarily your fault. So I don't want you to get discouraged by that. What I want you to realize is, is that all you can do is make your goals based on a process so that when bad things happen to you or when the plan doesn't go well, you can deviate the plan. What happens if your plan is to be a professional athlete? And then you have some freak injury where well, your life is not a waste now because you did everything in your power, right? So I want you to think about the way that you set goals. Here's the first piece of advice I'll give you. Beginning with the end in mind is a bad idea. Again, if your goal is I want to be a millionaire by the age of 40. Okay, well, there's nothing wrong with that plan other than there's no guarantee. There are things, too many variables outside of your control. So your life does not become a failure then when things outside of your control derail that plan. So don't make your goals about the outcome. Make them about the process. We'll talk about this tomorrow. Why is it that you can't stick to diets? Why is it that we can't stay on our workout plans? Well, the problem is you're aiming too high, too much, too early, too often. The reality is this, instead of making big temporary changes, you need to make small permanent changes in your lifestyle. That's important advice. Like if you wanna wake up earlier because you wanna work out, then don't start with setting your alarm 30 minutes early. Start with five extra minutes of sleep or five extra minutes for this next week, then five minutes more, which is 10, and then 15 minutes, and then 20 minutes, and it'll take you a couple weeks, but you'll settle into a new routine, and that's your new normal. Now you wake up 30 minutes early and you have more time to start your day. Same thing with your diet. 
You say, I'm on a diet. Well, you're doing some crash crazy diet. It's unsustainable long term. Are you going to eat like that forever? No, you need to make small, permanent lifestyle changes. Instead of cutting sugar completely out of your diet, unless you have to for medical reasons, maybe you just need to manage your sugar intake. You need to offset that with extra water, extra vegetables, more exercise. Because what happens if you deny yourself something, you're just going to eat it anyway, right? You're going to fall off the wagon and you're going to and you're going to violate your diet and then you're going to feel terrible about yourself like you're some horrible person. So we're going to talk about those decisions about why it's so hard to keep these these good habits and why it's so easy to keep these bad habits. We'll talk about that tomorrow. So stay tuned on that. Right? But this is where I want to land the plane. Is success a destination or a result of a process? If we're intentional about what we're doing and we have a purpose for it and we don't ignore it and we're not complacent, we don't just continue down this comfortable path, then we're going to find ourselves in a good place. Better today than we were yesterday and the day before and the month before and the year before. So even when tragedy strikes in our life, and it will, at some point there's going to be tragedy in your life, you'll be able to deal with that because you're in a good place. That's the Pareto principle we talked about. Success breeds more success. Before you know it, 20% of the people have 80% of the resources. And so you have people who are in destructive lifestyle patterns and they're looking at really successful people like Elon Musk saying, well, why is that fair? That guy shouldn't have that much money. And meanwhile, they're in this downward spiral of destructive decisions. It doesn't matter if you gave them a billion dollars, they would lose it anyway. They're in a destructive pattern, right? So it's a process. Don't make the desired outcome your goal. Make the goal is always about a process. The measurable outcomes are action statements, right? Being outcome oriented encourages us to take shortcuts, right? So for instance, if your goal is I need to have a 4.0, well, you can get a 4.0 without having any academic integrity, right? So that's just gonna encourage you to focus on the goal and not the process required, right? So if your goal is I wanna be happy, Lots of things will make you happy that aren't healthy.